could happen in just the next few days. CNN has learned the House Judiciary Committee plans to vote this week on a resolution that would lay out official procedures, granted official authority to conduct that full investigation into the president and determine whether or not to actually vote on articles of impeachment. Joining me now is Democratic Congressman Jer uh, Jamie Raskin of Maryland. He sits on both the judiciary and the oversight. And, sir, I know you have, uh, you know, th this would just be officially implementing what you guys are already doing through your work on looking into an impeachment and impeachment inquiry. But you say this, sir, the central sin, the original sin of the Trump administration is the decision to convert the presidency into a money-making operation for the president and his business and his families. Explain what you are going after most right now. Well, the framers of the Constitution saw the conversion of government into a for-profit enterprise as um, the essential offense against the Constitution. They wanted the president to be focused in an undivided way and in a loyal way on the interests of the American people, not on the private business interests of the president and his family and, and his friends. And so this is in the Constitution, in the emoluments clauses. I think that the Mueller report uh, and the Mueller investigation were very limited in their scope. And remember that President Trump said if Mueller looked at his finances, he would blow up the entire investigation, which tells us precisely where we need to go. We've got to follow the money. And every day now we are confronted with news about how the president has indeed converted the government of the United States into an instrument of self-enrichment. He's been so, mixing the public interest with the private interest of the Trump organization. And, and Congressman, you've been saying for the last few weeks that you think that this is a story that is more compelling, perhaps, to voters. You said, I think we'll be able to sell a story that leads naturally to this constitutional remedy. I just wonder what you say to those Americans who feel like perhaps Democrats are, you know, kitchen sink strategy now for you guys, right? And that you're moving the goalposts. You've got this new polling, a few weeks old, out of Monmouth University. It shows 59% of the American people don't think the president should be impeached. 35% do. But at the same time, it also shows only a 10-point divide in those that think it's a bad idea versus a good idea to at least conduct an, an impeachment inquiry. Well, we have to conduct constitutional oversight. That's our job. And, of course, when the Nixon impeachment inquiry began, only 19 percent of the people mm -hmm. favored the impeachment of the president. Today, I think it's 42 or 44 percent, depending on which poll uh, you look at. But I'm not so much interested in the polls as in what's actually going on in the administration. I mean, what we've learned over the last two weeks is the president uh, ordered or suggested to the vice president that he go and stay at the Trump resort in Denbug. Ireland, uh, 180 miles away from Dublin, where his meetings were, take pla were taking place, so he could stay at the Trump Hotel and bring attention to the Trump Hotel and put taxpayer money into it. Now we've learned about how special stops are being made in Scotland uh, of the um, of the U.S. Uh, the Air Force and other military uh, air air flights, so they can uh, fuel up near the hotel and have people stay there. The Constitution says the president is limited to his salary in office and Congress can't increase it or decrease it. And the president cannot receive any other payments from the United States government. And yet we now know of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars that Trump has been directing into the Trump enterprises. Now, he's starting to say, oh, it wasn't his idea. It was the vice president's idea and so on. It's irrelevant. He can't be taking that money from right. the U.S. government. And, and we will get to the bottom of why it happened. And I want to move on to Camp David. It's in your district and the Taliban meeting that was set up and then canceled over the weekend. But just quickly, quickly, Congressman, do you believe that if, if the president has been enriching himself purposefully in those ways, the Air Force stays at, uh, in Scotland, et cetera, are those impeachable offenses? Well, you just have to ask the founders of the Constitution. It's written right there in the Federalist Papers. Edmund Randolph talked about it. It's absolutely impeachable for the president to be violating the Monuments Clauses. Uh, no other president has even come close. Abraham Lincoln, when he got some elephant tusks that he really liked, turned them over to Congress and said, can I keep them? And they said, <laughs> and I guess... no, you give it to the Department of Interior. <laughs> Andrew Jackson, who's uh, Trump's hero, got a gold medallion from Simone Bolivar. He said, can I keep it? They said, no, you give it to the Department of State. This president has gone so far beyond it, what any other president has done, that it is uh, unbelievable. In so any event, the, it's up to Congress to decide whether or not he gets to keep the, that stuff. The re, I appreciate the his, history lesson there for everyone. Yeah. And I think what I'm asking, and I should have phrased it better, is to the American people, do you believe that that will sell to them so you get the majority in the
the will of the American people behind you as impeachable offenses? I think that every American, regardless of political party, wherever they live, understands that the President of the United States should not be using the White House in order to get rich. And in fact, Alexander, Ham Alexander Hamilton warned about this in Federalist 72. He said, one day we might get an avaricious president who essentially mm -hmm. uses the government as a series of get rich quick schemes. And I'm afraid that's where we are right now. So, Congressman, turning to your district, turning to Camp David, the president told everyone that he had planned and has now canceled a meeting with Taliban leaders at Camp David just a few days before the 18th anniversary of 9-11. Um, you heard your Republican counterparts, a few of them in the Congress, like Adam Kinzinger, calling out the president on this, Liz Cheney doing the same. And just in July, there was a report from the U.N. Security Council that just reminded everyone how much support the Taliban still gives to al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. The administration has not taken this meeting off the table. I mean, Mike Pompeo made very clear in interviews yesterday, it is still on the table to happen if they can get certain guarantees from the Taliban. Should it yes. happen at all? Well, let's start with this. Um, I favor meetings at Camp David, which is in beautiful Thurmont um, in Frederick County, Maryland, and everybody should go there. I wish the president had been using Camp David instead of Mar-a-Lago, where it's unconstitutional for him to be sending all of this federal government money. Secondly, I favor peacemaking, and I am uh, dismayed that the president has dismantled the peacemaking operations of the United States in the State Department and the U.S. Institute of Peace and so on. So all of this is just coming out of the president's head. And that goes to the essential randomness and incompetence of foreign policy mm -hmm. under Donald Trump. All of it is sort of jagging this way, zigzagging that way. There's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no real coherence. So, of course, everything falls apart. The president blew up his uh, secret meeting that none of us uh, knew about because the Taliban committed murders uh, against people in Afghanistan. Did he not know that the Taliban had been committing killings in <laughs> Afghanistan before? I mean, it's as if he just woke up and realized who he had invited to come to Camp mm. David. So it would be good if there was some real foreign policy expertise and there was some real logic and coherence wow. to the Trump foreign policy, but it's almost too late to wish for it at this and, point. And, and we've learned this morning that not only did Bolton oppose it, but the vice president, Mike Pence, opposed this happening as well. Before you go, let's switch gears. Let's talk a little 2020, right? Elizabeth Warren, you said on a radio interview over the weekend, quote, I love Elizabeth Warren and I think she would make an extraordinary president. Is that a formal endorsement of her? And do you believe she is more representative of your party at this point, sir, than the front runner, at least in the polling, former Vice President Joe Biden? Well, I've not made an endorsement yet. We've got sensational candidates out there, including Sounded Vice pretty President close Biden, to one. In, including, well, I, I think Elizabeth <laughs> Warren really is a remarkable figure. You know, she spent most of her life as a Republican. Um, she grew up wanting to be a teacher, which speaks to millions of people across the country. And like our last Democratic president, she is a law professor and someone who understands the Constitution and the law. And obviously that tugs at my heart a lot because we're in a period of intense lawlessness and corruption. We've got to get back to the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights for the people. But to the question, more representative of the party now, do you believe, than Joe Biden? You know, I mean, that's what primaries are about. And I think that uh, Joe Biden speaks to a lot of people in our party. He speaks to me and he's had a, a great career. But I do think that Elizabeth Warren has set out a series of policy tra trajectories that forecast where we need to be going uh, as a people. We need to make sure that the government is an instrument of the common good and the public interest, that the economy is working for everybody, not just for people at the top. And that's really what Donald Trump has done. I mean, you know, he said he wanted to drain the swamp. He moved into the swamp, he built a hotel on it, and he started renting out rooms to foreign governments and kings and princes. Congressman Jamie Raskin, thank you for your colorful descriptions this morning.